So I have previously shown you how to unlock the bootloader, install TWRP, and gain root access to the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Now during, those, during that process, as soon as you install TWRP, you have tripped Nox. And that means that as long as you have TWRP installed and or root access installed, you are going to lose official over the air updates. It means that you will no longer get them in the over the air update notification. Even if you go through the software area of the settings application and manually check, you will be told that there is no new update for this device even though I know there is a newer update for this specific device so today I want to show you how to update your version of Android while you have TWRP and root access installed without losing all of your data Now I want to emphasize that without losing all of your data because naturally you could use the unbrick method to manually install the latest version of Android. There are numerous sources that you can check to see if there's a new version even though you're being told there is no new version. Um, there's Sam Mobile, there's Updato, and if you want, you can use the software SamFirm to download the latest version for your specific device and the region for your specific device and carrier as well. So once you check any of those three sources and you see that there is a newer version for your device, so for example, right now, I am on the ARK2 update for this Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and whenever I check Updato I can see that there is an update on December 17th that ends in ARL3. So the first thing we need to do, we need to download that new firmware again through any of the three sources I'm going to have each of those linked in the video description. Once we download that, we're going to extract those files and we're going to load them up in a certain way in Odin. It's going to be very similar to the unbrick process or returning to Samsung stock Android tutorial, but we're going to do this in a specific different way so that we do not lose the data that we have installed. You see we have a certain setup with the settings application icon there, treble there, we have a second page with some applications installed. So once you download that new version of the firmware manually onto your computer, you're going to extract that firmware and then we're going to boot up the device into download mode. And if you're not familiar with how to do any of this, be sure to check the full tutorial on my website as I go through the step-by-step -step process of how to do all of this for, so that you can do this from beginning to end even if you don't know, for example, how to boot up into download mode. So we're just going to hold the Bixby and volume down buttons while we plug in the USB cable that is connected to our computer to get us into download mode. And then we are going to go ahead and open Odin on our computer, which again, the just in case you don't have that downloaded, will be linked in the full tutorial on my website which you can find in the video description. So while we still have our Galaxy Note 9 plugged in 
to our computer with the USB cable and while we are still in download mode. As I mentioned, we're going to open up Odin. Make sure that the COM port is blue so that it is detected and that it is, you see the added bit in the log file. If that is not the case, then install something like Samsung Smart Switch as that should ins install the USB drivers for your device properly. And right here you can see we have our newly downloaded firmware. This is the firmware we have currently installed, was downloaded last month. This is the newly downloaded firmware that was released on December the 7th, 2018. And just like the other one, it's going to come with five files. Each of these files has, has certain letters at the beginning. And we're going to be plugging those into these spe specific slots. So we'll go ahead and click on the BL link. We're going to browse to the newly downloaded firmware and select the BL file. We're going to go to the CP link, browse to the CP file, and add it to Odin. This is where things change from returning back to stock Android. We're going to be clicking on the CSC file. Now as you saw before, we have two CSC files. One is CSC. And then the other one is home CSC. Now, if you want to completely return back to stock and lose all of your data, choose the regular CSC. I have shown you that in the past. However, if you want to keep the data that you have on your device and just want to update like a regular over the air update, we're going to choose the home CSC option. And just like before, I leave the AP option last because it's such a big file, it takes a little bit longer to load. You can see it's a 4.5 gigabyte file. Just go ahead and load it into Odin. It's going to take a few seconds. You're going to see not responding. You're going to see the loading. The amount of time this file takes to load into Odin will depend on various things from how big that file is, how fast your computer is, how good of a connection you have from the Galaxy Note 9 to your PC, like if you have a very low quality cable then it's going to take longer to send that information over. So there we have it, we have the BL file loaded, the AP file loaded, the CPC file loaded, and then again the home underscore CSC file loaded it there. Once you have all four of those done, go ahead and click on the start button. You're going to see some things done. On the phone you're going to see a new progress bar appear. Now that progress bar is going to reflect this progress bar that we see on Odin. And what we're basically doing is we are overwriting these image files. So we have overwritten the boot image file, which is otherwise known as the kernel. We have overwritten the recovery image file which means that if you have TWRP installed, you're going to need to install TWRP again after you have updated to the latest version of Android on the Galaxy Note 9. This is going to take a few minutes. 
that system file is a bigger file than the recovery or boot image files, so it's going to take longer. We're just going to be patient during this process. As I've said before in some of these videos, the reason why I do these videos is so that you can follow along with me and so that you don't get paranoid and then thinking, oh no, Odin's getting stuck on the system image and it's just going to sit there for hours and hours. You can see that we are making progress. And just as I promised, we have gone past the system image and now we are flashing the vendor image. And then the modem, the cache, the ODM. Now Odin is just finishing up this last little bit. What we're looking for is a pass message right here. That's going to show up as soon as the process is complete. And as soon as that happens, your Galaxy Note 9 is going to reboot on its own. So as I mentioned that the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 has done a reboot on its own. So you're going to go through the typical boot animation sequence on your device. We're just going to be patient during this boot process. 
not only does Android have to set stuff up, but Samsung, Samsung Experience has to set stuff, set stuff up as well. And after a few minutes, you're going to see this upgrading Android message right there. It's going to be just as if you had applied a regular over-the-air update. And there we go. We are back to the regular Android that we were at. You can see we have our settings icon, our Project Treble icon. We have our second page full of applications. So this time, whenever we go into settings and go into about phone software information, you can see we are on the December version of this software. All of our data has been saved. All of our settings have been saved. And there you have it. Again, just be patient during that boot cycle. It's going to act as if it has formatted the device. But as long as you have chosen the home CSC file, then we're just doing a regular manual update from the previous firmware to the new firmware. And that is how to manually update the Galaxy Note 9 without losing any of your data after you have gained root access to the device.